Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have a very cool review for you from the brand Citizen. Now they were founded back in 1918 by Japanese and Swiss invest investors, uh, which is something that not a lot of people know. Um, and they eventually uh, settled on the name brand of Citizen Watch Company in 1930. Um, and basically the Citizen Group now owns Miyota, uh, Bolova, Arnold and Son, Frederick Constant Alpina, and Campanola. Um, I'm sure I pronounced one of or more of those wrong along the way. But basically, the Citizen brand is still being fully made in house in Japan, which I find very, very cool. Um, and a little bit different than Seiko, right? One of their, you know, more well-known cousins, if you will, although they're not related um, in terms of kind of their history and scale and place within the market. Um, as Seiko has grown, so has their manufacturing in terms of going, uh, having more factories throughout Asia. Here, Citizen, though, are still very much made in Japan, which is very, very cool. So in terms of the type of watch, I consider this an everyday watch, some key common characteristics and sign language. When you're looking for something you can wear every day, of course, you're going to want that versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes. Now, this is part of the Citizen collection. This is their NB 1050-59A. And um, it's just a classic everyday mechanical watch. Um, and I dig it a lot. I think it really fills a space. It's kind of uh, an updated version of the Sarb, but at a more Sarks-like execution. Um, but at the same time, it's it's also kind of uh, uh, at the. <laughs> It's, it also has other things going for it, and it's it's almost like also an Aquaterra alternative as well. Um, so it's just an interesting and very cool piece that I'm so glad that they came out with. And I really consider this kind of a must-have, really, I think, for Citizen. And I think that's very, very cool. So let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. Okay, guys. Now, this piece, in terms of its scale, is pretty bang on, guys. 38 millimeter diameter, only 10 and a half millimeters thick, and it wears quite thin, honestly. Um, and then it's 47 millimeters lug to lug, and it's in full stainless steel with a Duratec hard coating, uh, which basically is a surface treatment uh, that makes it a lot harder and more resistant to scratching. It is fully brushed and polished, and the luster on the polish uh, looks fantastic even through the coating which is very very nice the coating also doesn't add any dark tint or anything like that which i thought was very very cool i think they consider it a kind of platinum color so it does add brightness um so it, it doesn't actually darken but yeah it looks good and as you can see by the level of brushing and polishing there very very sharp look at those bevels my goodness, transition very, very clean. Not the sharpest or cleanest by any means, but darn is that good, especially when you think about the price point here. Uh, these go for uh, 70,000 Japanese yen list, uh, which comes out to about 590 bucks from Japan online store, which is where I purchased this one. Um, so definitely check out links in uh, the description from that standpoint. The sapphire crystal here, uh, is nice and flat and also does have an air coating and one thing that you can really notice here is that rehot with that high polished finish my goodness look at how just that plays with the light man it was just such a cool touch that you just can't get from the renderings but when you have it in hand um, you know you can't help but be impressed um, now in terms of the bezel it's fixed and fully polished looks very very nice and then uh the crown is not signed which is a little bit of a bummer but it's by no means uh you know a deal breaker I, i'm i'm very st i'm still quite happy with this piece um the movement inside is your uh citizen miyota 9011 movement um, and basically it has a four hertz sweep. It's plus or minus 10 seconds a day and has a 42 hour power reserve. And the case back being see-through does help you kind of enjoy uh, what you're seeing there, which is very nice. 
Now, the dial itself is actually a very, very pale satiny silver dial and renders visually white. So if you're looking for a nice white dial that is cool and crisp, this is the one for you. The nice thing is um, it doesn't render creamy or anything like that. So I think it actually does make it uh, quite a bit more versatile because it is on the whiter side versus being on the warmer kind of ivory side. These indices are very, very nicely applied and they are actually brushed and polished. So they have these really cool bevels and facets there that make them pop as well as brushing that helps grab the light really really nicely from that standpoint the date is framed at three o'clock it's black font over a silver disc and then you do have polished hands which are loomed for the hour and minute hand and then uh in terms of the loom that's on here it's actually some of citizens proprietary loom which does blow glue and i'm sorry glow blue did i say go glow blue all right, it glows blue, the color blue, and it, it, it's really a good look. Um, in terms of water resistance, you're getting 10 bar, so about 100 meters, which is great. The lugs here are 19 millimeters, which isn't the greatest thing ever. Uh, the solid end links are quite nice and tight, though. You can see very sharp. And one thing that they did, you know, instead of just milling a couple of lines here, uh, if you look on the back side, you can see that there's actually another piece of metal laid on top. So the seam is much sharper, which is uh, visually much nicer, uh, which is great. And then this does taper down to 18 millimeters. And then you do get um, two micro adjusts here, which do help. But man, if this had, um, this is one of the dings I will give it apart from, you know, not having a signed crown, um, is going to be the fact that there are also no half links. So, uh, if only it had half links, I could get this dialed in right now. It being the middle of the summer, I'm actually wearing this a lot looser than I would like. Typically, um, I keep going back and forth. I basically keep putting, um, an extra link back in and out of the bracelet because it's always either just a little bit more snug or a little bit looser than I want right now. Uh, I have it a little bit looser, but that's just something that I'm going through. Um, so if you do have a seven and a quarter inch wrist and wear your watch, you know, depending on where you wear it on your wrist will, will dictate really what's going to be most comfortable for you. But if you're in kind of that weird in between size of seven and a quarter, um, you know, this might not be the greatest, uh, fitment for you. Um, but it is still quite nice. It does have a pin and collar system, which worked really well, but let's go ahead, get it on the wrist and see how it wears. Okay, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist wears really, really well, nice and flat. Holy smokes, look at how flat that wears. Ooh, those contours really help flatten it out. I like that there's kind of a mid case and then there's a little bump on the back for the case back, a little bump on the top out for the bezel. And then of course you have this gorgeous, super versatile dial. And again, that case shape, although it is kind of very Grand Seiko-esque, it also at the same time is uh, very reminiscent of, I think for me anyway, I think it looks very Aquaterra-like. It doesn't have, of course, the uh, inner horns of the lugs as contoured and finished, but it just gives me a very similar vibe when I see that. Also, the uh, links having that wider center link with the thinner outer link and that three link configuration does also remind me much of the Aquaterra, which is a watch that I've loved for a very long time. And um, it's very cool to see this as a bit of an affordable alternative uh, from those means. And then when you get up close, of course, it might look a little bit oversized, but that's just lens distortion. When we get down, get a little bit more arm in there, a little bit better perspective, you can see there's nothing, um, you know, really big about this watch at all. Uh, I will say the male end links do stretch the case out visually, but uh, for those of you that are upset by that, guys, look, the thing sweeps along the lines of the case, so it does turn down quite nicely, so don't be too worried about it from that standpoint, um, because I think what it does help with by having those wider center links and uh, 
and that taper and everything, it all kind of ties in to actually help the watch uh, appear a little bit larger, actually. And I think um, it, it helps and it just doesn't feel quite as petite. It still has a nice tailored fit, um, but I think a lot of kind of the visual weight is carried out through having that bit of elongated uh, case thanks to those male end links. But with that said, let's go ahead, uh, set up some loom shots, low light transition, and closing thoughts. All right, we'll go ahead and hit the lights here. As you can see, that blue loom looks fantastic. Um, but one thing I like to do in here is get some low light transition going because you're not always gonna be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're gonna be coming in and out of a building, maybe walking underneath an overhang or the shade of a tree, as well as possibly just hanging out, spending time within your favorite automobile. And you can see with even within that transitional lighting, still ultimately legible, which I really, really like, whether it's gonna be going from very dark to transitional to maybe even very harsh high contrast lighting still very nice you can even see the loom there wanting to peek out uh, which i think is really really gorgeous so and then one thing you would also pay attention to is as the light glides over the brushing typically that would expose any type of uh you know factory defects or anything like that which this thing is looking really really well finished and that dial itself that pale silver is really quite gorgeous man i'm digging i mean that's nice when you like how it looks in the light and then also outside of the light it's it's a special feeling and it's a very very special watch now um closing thoughts on this one guys on the wrist it really just wears perfectly apart from of course and that's more the case the bracelet uh if it had a half length that'd be really great um but on the wrist it wears really nice and basically it's compact but not undersized which i really dig in terms of model variants it's also available in a black dial or a blue dial and then comparable models of course when you're thinking about your seiko sarb um but then with quality and a finish that's a little bit more in line with a seiko sarks um and then the uh but it's still even outperforms and kind of outspecs it because you do get that proper four hertz movement um and it you know which helps retain that kind of jdm appeal which i think is pretty nice guys bottom line on here this is an absolute must have and it's, it's really a near perfect everyday in-house timepiece so I dig this one a lot, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, if you liked the video, please do a like, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.